Hello and welcome to the next section of videos in our Rust Data Structures and Algorithms course. During this coming section, we are going to be working on a persistent mechanism for storing data of various sizes. This won't cover absolutely everything we need, but it will certainly give us a good scope on how we can do these things and some of the questions that need to be asked as we do them. During this video in particular, we're just going to be doing some of the setup that is needed to make building the rest of the project simpler, such as importing the things we need and building an error type. We'll start by importing several of the things we need. The first thing we're going to need is a library called Surdy, and its current version is 1.0.104. Surdy is short for Serial Deserialize, and for all of the following dependencies, you can just find their links on crates.io and find out more about them. There's tons of really useful information about these crates. Um, Surdy is really good. It provides macros and it provides a, a mechanism for serializing any kind of object into something like JSON or TOML or YAML or any other file format like it, or even simple binary data. And the reason Surdy is so popular across the Rust ecosystem, almost everyone uses it, is that it's a single point. So if you make your thing work with Surdy, it can be output as any format and can be input from any format. And it's relatively easy. You just derive the macro using the following crate, Surdy derive. And again, that's 1.0.104. Bin code is a library for encoding objects as a string of bytes, which depends on Surdy. And that's why we've needed to import Surdy. Failure is a really handy library for combining multiple errors into a single error type. It just makes life a lot simpler. If you implement failure as a trait, you can have a lot more flexibility with your errors. And failure derive enables the building of errors to match this fail trait and makes it really easy to do so. And rand is obviously we've used rand before. That gets us random numbers. And we're also going to use hmap. And to import that, we're going to use uh, wiggly braces around path equals, and then the path to wherever you've stored your hmap code. And the reason we're using that is because we want that hashing method from it. We're not using the, the rest of the hmap, but since we've already written the hash method, let's just import it here. When I run cargo test, it will take a minute to download all of the appropriate things. I'm actually going to edit the hmap file. One thing I forgot to do, I didn't make hasher method public. So I'm just going to open up that file and change its hasher method to public. And while we're here, we might as well get rid of an unused constant, that b grow thing. Okay, now I'm going to open up a file called source error.rs. Now the point in this file is going to be to handle errors for the rest of this project. Because we're going to be using two different libraries that both have a different error type, we're going to need our own error type that kind of wraps both of them. And I'm going to make this implement failure because it saves some effort in some places. We'll use failure derive, which provides us with macros that make it easier to implement fail. And the fail trait depends on the display trait. So our blob error is going to have no room. There's no room left in the block to store this. Too big means the item is too big to fit in the block. And we'll say how big it is as a response. Not found means if we're looking for something and we can't find it. Another option in a similar case would just be to use a result of an option, but that kind of gets unwieldy. And then we'll have these two other error types. We'll have bin code, which wraps a binary coding error, and an IO, which wraps a standard IO error. Now we need to derive fail for this. And fail also depends on two other properties. One is debug, and the other is display. And because this is an enum, we can actually use the fail macro and give a fail property. And we say fail display. We want to display the no room variant of the enum as no room, but with text, with spaces and stuff. The same for too big. And note we can use the formatting style strings on the enum part. So I use the squiggly braces and zero, of course, refers to that U64, the first element of that tuple. 
we better include this in our lib. So just open up lib so we can include it. So if there's any errors, we'll be able to see them sooner. Not found, of course, needs that text. For the bin code and standard IO error, we will just output that error directly. They already implement display, so we can just use that ourselves. Lots of error types implement fail, and the ones in the standard library, a lot of them were implemented by the fail crate. It's, as it's just too handy a crate not to. So now we're going to implement from bin code error for blob error. So this is a tool that enables question mark to work effectively. So we'll just have from bin code error for blob error. And then the function we have to write is called from. And we'll just take an E, which is a bin code error, and return self. And the self we're going to return is a blob error colon colon bin code, and that's E. Then we can just copy and paste this code so that it does exactly the same thing for standard IO error with a, a few minor tweaks. And that means that when you use the question mark operator on the errors, it will do the conversions automatically and you don't have to do a lot of awkward work to turn these errors as you want them. That's everything really we need to set up. 